We'll ask Coach Bila to make an opening statement and then go to questions uh, for all four of the fellows up here. Coach? Well, first, I'll uh, give credit to Nebraska, a very good football team that uh, earned the right to be here as well as us and um, knew our guys were up for the challenge last Sunday uh, to be through what we've gone through uh, as a group of men. Um, the way that they kind of responded on Sunday, Tuesday's practice, I knew we had a chance. Wednesday and Thursday, I knew we had a really good chance. And then after that first quarter, first half today, I knew we had an excellent chance. And it's because of these guys, uh, these three guys that are here, 71 other guys that we brought with us. We left 40 back in Madison. Uh, I got a group of men that uh, only know one thing, it's how to work, uh, how to have faith, and, and um, their, their determination to, to get here and, and the resiliency of this group uh, gave us a championship. So uh, thank you very much and open up for questions. Okay, we'll take questions for coach as well as the student athletes. Raise your hand, here we go, right here on the aisle. Uh, Monty, um, last year you were playing in this game uh, a year ago, and uh, you couldn't have foreseen all the struggles, the off-field struggles, and also you know some of the early struggles this season on the field. Uh, could you talk a little bit about um, what it means to you to get back here, to get another shot at the Rose Bowl, and um, just the, in the context of all the struggles that you've gone through? Yeah, I've been through a lot, um, but um, what I, I just made sure to keep focusing and keep playing with my teammates. And you know, I read something that Coach B said. I, I made sure not to show it uh, throughout this team because I didn't want to, you know, be a distraction or anything like that. So I just stuck with the formula, and and I believe we all did. And I'm just really glad and really fortunate to to be on this team. Down here on the right, this is a question for all you guys, including you, Coach. Three Rose Bowls now. Is this one any sweeter? Chris, we'll start with you. I think in a way it is. Um, we'd been through a lot this year. Uh, had five really tough losses. We felt we could have won. Um, and this kind of validated everything we put into this season, uh, overcame some obstacles. And to go through that adversity and come out on top at the end uh, means a lot to us. James? Yeah, for sure. With all the adversity we faced this season, uh, it's really a culmination of what, what we've been through. And this is great to win the Big Ten and get another shot at the Rose Bowl. Monte? Yeah, basically a little bit of both. A little bit of, of what they both said. I mean, we had our backs against the walls, and we knew it as a team. And so we just made sure just to focus on, you know, our plan and just block everyone out and just keep fighting. So it, it means a lot. It means a lot more. Coach, I think just uh, to say that it's that to have three, uh, three Big Ten championships, uh, that that says it all. It does make this one very very special. Let's go here to the left. Brad, it seemed like you guys really went into your bag of tricks on offense tonight. Um, where did some of those plays come from, and how long had you had them? You know, it was kind of a mixed bag. I, I mean, uh, we practiced some of them for a while. Um, I know Matt kept talking all along about having an indoor game and, uh, you know, being able to execute certain things. And, um, you know, there's probably a couple we haven't used yet either uh, that will remain a little secret. Uh, James, you know, really has wanted to be recruited as a quarterback all along, so finally have that opportunity uh, to show up out there today. And... Uh, just a lot of different things, but our kids, you know, have a little bit of fun with it, but it was still the meat and potatoes that, that got us where we were. Back here on the right. Coach, uh, Bo Pelini said that you guys didn't do a whole lot of things different uh, tonight than you did in the first meeting, and uh, Kurt was just telling the Big Ten Network uh, the same thing. Was it really that similar of a game plan and, and kind of second? Where was this Wisconsin team all year? Well, you know, um, I think offensively changed a little bit with Kurt, you know, just a different quarterback in there than when we had Joel in there. But uh, the run game for sure wasn't a lot of different um, things. You know, we hit some arounds and some some different gadgets, uh, obviously that uh, were new. But uh, we stuck to the success of what makes us good. You know, we really uh, don't deviate. We we've got a plan that we stick to. Uh, we talked about working together as a group, offense, defense, special teams, and as far as where we've been all year. We've been on the cusp of it. Obviously, we played a four-quarter game, but um, just haven't had it. We, we, I knew we had a chance this week because we're really actually healthy for the first time in a long time at all positions, and that was a big part of the game. Out here to the left. Coach Melvin had 216 yards on nine carries. Can you talk about his performance today and yeah. how he fit into that game plan? You know what? Melvin's been getting better every week. I think he'd be the first to tell you he might be the player that's grown the most in our program from game one to where we are today. Um, I was going through some yardage totals there at the end of the game, and number 28 right here said, just don't go past me. I don't know what Monty ended up with. Um, it's always good when he's, he's on the verge of breaking out Monty's records. Um, but it, it, it uh, speaks volumes about, you know what, these, these guys compete on a daily basis. I mean, Monty's great, James is great, and Melvin's getting the, uh, the hang of things, and it's, it's really fun to think about the future. Right down here. 
for Monte and James, did it feel like you guys were playing for a different team tonight, the way the offense was producing? And second, what do you think allowed the offense to just be so incredibly effective tonight? Monte, start with you, please. I mean, honestly, honestly it's just uh, the energy. The energy that we had in the locker room going out to, onto the field and, and out on the sideline was what we missed the second half last time we met this team. And we made sure to focus on building this game into a four-quarter game, and I believe we did. And I, that's mainly, that's, that's the difference right there. It's just everyone was focused on the plan and kept the energy high. James? Yeah, like, what, like what Monty said, and just everybody straining through the whistle. We knew you, you never know which play is going to matter. Uh, each play is a big play. So I think everybody finishing each and every play just helped us push us through this game. Here on the aisle. Uh, Coach, could you talk a little bit about Monty's perseverance throughout the season and uh, culminating in what you guys were able to accomplish tonight? Well, I, I think it speaks volumes about who he is individually, but uh, just as a collective group, I think when Monty made the decision to come back and uh, spoke up last year in the Rose Bowl locker room, uh, we all knew we'd want to get back to Pasadena. Um, he expressed the desire to, to you know, stay for a senior year and make that happen. And when he uh, did that, I think it spoke volumes to all the people around him. Um, I, I, I'd be... I don't want to steal words from, from James and all the other running backs, offensive linemen. They wanted to see Monty have success. And hopefully this performance tonight propels him to the top of the Doak Walker because he's a guy that deserves it in every way. Um, and uh, I, I think it's a true indicator of what kind of man you have. Uh, not, we all know he's a good player, but he's an incredible human being. Right out here. Brad, it's going to get lost in all the offensive fireworks tonight, but uh, can you just uh, touch on the way your defense played Absolutely. in the first half, um, especially, you know, except for that one Martinez run, but. Crow's interception and, and just every all the other big plays they made? Yeah, I think, Jim, that uh, our defensive coaches have been unbelievable all year with a game plan. You know, we don't make a lot of calls. We just uh, stick to a plan. We were we had a third down plan, but on first and second down, we had something that we just wanted to execute and play well. Um, I thought Coach Ash, Coach Partridge uh, had two new defensive coaches out of four for us to, to play the way we did. Um, also, just personnel-wise, you know, Darius Hillary goes out, Devin Smith goes out. We got Peniel Jean in there and, and a number of guys playing in different positions that hadn't practiced that way all week. Uh, we're very, very deep up front, which I think makes us play well. And then Chris in the linebacker core uh, is as good as I've ever been around in coaching. And uh, they're getting coached very, very well, which leads to great plays. Right out here. Hey, Chris, uh, how much motivation was it this week? You know, a lot of people talking about a five-loss Wisconsin team, a, a team that finished third in the division. Is that something you guys talked about or, or you know, kind of uh, used as motivation going into this? Yeah, I think we're pr fairly candid about that. Um, our five losses were all close. Three of them were in overtime. Um, as far as being third in our division, I think uh, it's important to play by the rules off the field, too, and we're proud of that. We run a clean program, and um, I'm really proud of that personally, too. So. Uh, we took it as motivation. We knew we were better than a five-loss team. I think today we showed it. Back out here to the right. Monty, I know you felt like you had unfinished business after losing the Rose Bowl again last year. How important will this game be for you? Uh, well, yeah, for me, uh, that was the main thing that, you know, one of the main factors of coming back, you know, one of them was that I feel like there was a lot of unfinished business that I, that I can prove and also for this team. And like I said, speaking for the entire team, we all have something to prove. So we're going to take these, these weeks, you know, serious. You know, as always, really focus on all the small things and playing a four-quarter game against a great team down in Pasadena. Over here. Coach, all, all the things this team's gone through, was there ever a point during this season where you worried that you were getting to the point where it was just too much to handle? Was there a point that you became confident that they were going to be able to do it, endure it, and get stronger from it? I know you think I'm going to be crazy, but, you know, at, right after some of those games, Saturday night, you're sitting – uh, you know, on the plane rides home, some around the road. But um, then I come in on Sunday and I just see the guys uh, that, that we've had the great fortune of coaching and, and see the look in their eyes, the passion. They hurt when it hurts, where you're supposed to hurt. But they also know the one element that we all share in this world is time. And if we spent one day worrying about ourselves or, or what's happened, we would never have a chance uh, to move forward. And our guys are pretty quick to move on. I, I can't tell you how excited I was on Sunday and Monday a lot of guys up watching film, big eyes. They were excited. They were energetic. They knew what we could do. And, and then this locker room today was, was off the charts. So uh, I get it. I understand. I don't have a normal locker room. I got, a, I got a group of men that is uncommon in the way that they go about their business. Out here. Monty, what did you think of Melvin tonight and the way he played? Oh, man. I, I, was, 
I was waiting for, for the day, you know, for the game where he was going to really excel and really show what he's capable of doing. And, and I'm sure the coaches are extremely excited, you know, for the future because this, this player, uh, he's going to be very, very good. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, really, it's really pleasing to me to see him grow uh, and, and watch him really do some great things out there. So it, it felt good. Got time for a couple more right down here. I've got two here, but first for Coach, did Nebraska surprise you at all that it, that it wasn't a little bit more competitive? Well, I think they're competitive. It's just, you know, our defense, I'd like to give credit to our defense. They, they really um, kept the ball. Obviously, the Martinez play early on showed how special he is. I think we, had a, we thought we had a sack for loss there, and he, he's able to make a few people miss. And uh, I give credit to them. They, they, they were a very good team, but we executed very, very – we played well today. Um, and, you know, I, I know – uh, it's easy to say that, you know, you're looking at the score, but uh, defensively and, and offensively and on special teams, we just played extremely well today. And this is for Ball. Um, just what was Nebraska doing or, or not doing that just allowed you to, to get loose and, and really run? Um, well, just like Coach. Just like Coach B said, let's give credit to them because they earned the spot to be here just, just as much as we did. But um, really, it was just what we were doing. We just focused on what we were doing, and we just made sure to, to execute the, the game plan. And the offensive linemen did a great job of creating some big, huge holes you know, for us. They, they actually made it very easy for us, and we didn't want to let them down. So we, we, we hit it you know, full speed and you know, had to make plays in the back end, and I believe we did. Is there one final question for the student athletes? Chris, you you missed two games, but you came back facing a zone read team like led by Taylor Martinez. Uh, how important was the preparation this week, and how impressed were you with your defense staying disciplined? I mean, it seemed like after that big run, he never felt comfortable in the pocket again. I think it uh, goes without saying that your preparation is the most important part. Uh, you know, the week leading up to this game, I think we had one of our best weeks of preparation on defense, um, and they've got a lot of weapons. Obviously, Taylor showed it on that run. Um, a few other times, and they got it to their backs. But um, really proud of the defensive effort from the D line to the linebackers to the secondary. I think is one of our best we put forth uh, all year um, in the first half, especially. Chris James Monte, you may go back to the locker room. Congratulations. Good luck in Pasadena. Anything left for Coach Bielema out here? I know Matt Canada has been criticized a little bit this year, but. How much credit does he deserve for what happened tonight? Well, he obviously came up with a game plan um, offensively. Uh, uh, Matt, the reason I hired him, I've been very impressed with his creativity ever since I've known him. Uh, you got to understand now, I lost six coaches out of nine, um, four on offense. It, it, to put that room together and uh, to grind it out the way we have all year in unwavering faith, um, it, it's a, a group of guys that take a lot of pride in how they work and how they – uh, uh, coach our players. I think our players needed to grow. Tr I lost some coaches that our players really liked. And, and anytime you have that, when you're dealing with a young man as great as these kids are, there's always apprehension. Is it going to be as good as the guy that was before you? And I've done that before in my coaching career. When I went on to different jobs, I've replaced coaches that were very popular and I had to win our kids over. And I think it's gradually happened over the course of the year and guys had to felt com feel comfortable and um, I give a lot of credit to Matt Canada, but all my offensive coaches overall. Way out here. Uh, Coach, you know, coming into this game, you guys were, were the underdogs, but you come out and you beat this uh, Nebraska team by 39 points. So what does it mean for you and your team to really relish that underdog role? It, it does. Um, make no bones about it. We love uh, when people say you can't. Um, we heard it from a lot of different people, a lot of talking heads, uh, a lot of people when you're bumping into them, obviously all the interview things. Um, you just kind of quietly store it away, you know, kind of a, uh, you know, walk softly and carry a big stick. And when you have a chance to take a swing, take it hard. Um, and I knew our kids were going to come out and, and prove some things uh, very, very well today. Down in front. Coach, I'm not sure if you play favorites and, you know, season's not over, but where does this team rank of all the teams you've ever had? I, I tell you what, I told them this last night. Um, obviously, I've had teams that maybe have been ranked higher, won more games. Um, I don't know if I've enjoyed coaching a team as much as these guys because we've went through some pretty high uh, peaks and some pretty low valleys, um, and they're the same guys every day. I love coaching guys that, that are the same people every day. It's the ones that are up and down all the time that you kind of get frustrated with, and um, I knew what kind of room I had, and that's why today really isn't a big shock to me. Is there one final question? All right, Coach, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.